so hello friends today our topic is root locus so before we start root locus i will tell you must um, you must follow the theories first then i just here show you how to solve the problem nothing else so here we have taken a question plot the root locus for a unit feedback closed loop system whose open loop transfer function is given this so <coughs> here i will discuss a uh, few steps and in this few steps you will know how to solve this type of equation where the s is in order of 4 okay the equation of s is in order of 4 you can see here so what is our first step our first step is to find out the poles and the zeros so from this equation we can easily see that the poles will be s equals to 0 s equals to minus 4 and from here by using Sridhar Acharya we can say that another two poles will be minus 1 plus i and minus 1 minus i okay and we can see here no zeros okay because no numerator term is there so how many number of poles are there number of poles is 4 1 2 3 and 4 and how many number of 0 there is no 0 that means 0 so we come to step 2 in step 2 we have to find out the centroid so what is centroid uh, now centroid is summation of poles minus summation of zeros divided by number of poles minus number of zeros so here in our equation the summation of poles means uh, the numbers of the poles so this is 0 minus 4 and here this is a complex number so we will take only the real part of this complex number so 0 minus 4 minus 1 and minus 1 so this is our summation of poles and summation of 0 means 0 now the number of poles is 4 and number of zeros is 0 so number of poles minus number of 0 means 4 minus 0 so this will become minus 1.5 okay now we come to point step 3 so here in step 3 we have to find out the angle of asymptotes so here is the formula for angle of asymptotes so this is just before number of poles minus number of zeros is 4 and here the new term is q so q is from 0 1 2 3 4 5 up to any number okay so how much number will consider for q so the q value will be up to p minus z minus 1 value so here p minus z value is 4 so p minus z minus 1 value means what 3 so we will consider q up to 3 okay for this 0 1 2 and 3 we will find out the angle of asymptotes so we have uh, put q equals to 0 and find out the angle of asymptote q1 q2 q3 this way we have find out the angle of asymptotes here so now we are on step 4 so before discussing step 4 we will discuss one thing if you consider this is our imaginary axis and this is our real axis okay now one thing happens that uh, any root locus starts from po poles and inside zeros okay so if we consider arbitrarily that here is a pole 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 and pole okay so where the root locus lies so at first we consider this pole and we will look after the RHS side of the S plane so there is no poles or zeros here so there will be no root locus okay then we will here as there is no root locus we will consider this point now from here we can see one pole is there so one odd number of pole is there so there will be an root locus now we will go to the next pole from the next pole you can see there is even number of poles two poles are there so even number of poles so no root locus will lie between these two poles and then we will consider the next pole so from this pole you can see there is three number of poles there so from here to there there will be a root locus they lie so the here are two root locus if we consider a situation like this where here is a pole here is a zero here is a pole here is a zero so i said earlier that from here we will consider from here on the rhs side there is no poles or no zeros so there will be no root locus from the next this is a zero so i have told earlier that from zero no root locus starts root locus always starts from poles so from here we cannot make root locus so we go to the next point that is a pole from this pole you can see that here is a zero and here is a pole 
so 2 that is a even number so here also cannot be a root locus so we'll go to the next one that is a 0 from 0 no root locus can be start so this opportunity also goes I will come to the next point that is from this pole we can see that here is a four poles and zeros so this root locus will also not occur so from the next point we can see here is five poles and zeros so this is an odd number of poles and zeros so here only the root locus will lie this concept you have to understand first after that we come to our main question so here we got the poles one is uh, at point zero one is at minus four and uh, other two is on imaginary point minus one plus a minus one minus a so here if you just see you can see that this is our zero point and this is our minus four point just consider it roughly so i have made a small segment like um, here one here two here three and here four okay now the poles are at 0 and minus 4 and another two poles is, is here okay minus 1 plus i minus 1 minus i so this is a minus 1 point okay now after that in step 2 you can see that we have uh, find out the centroid that is minus 1.5 so we have to point out this so if this is 1 we approximately consider that this is 1.5 this is our centroid point okay from this centered point we will draw the angle of asymptotes okay so here are our four angle of asymptotes that's uh, that are 45 degree 135 degree 225 degree and 315 degree okay so now our first angle we made this is 45 degree okay then after that we made 135 degree so if this is 90 degree 90 degree plus 45 degree that will be 135 degree this angle is 135 degree okay now we'll find out the 225 degree angle so 180 plus 45 that is 225 degree okay from here 225 degree and this is 3315 degree you can see okay so this angle of asymptotes also drawn now we'll move to our next step that is step 5 okay in step 5 we have to find out the breakaway point before that we need to write the characteristics equation so characteristics equation is 1 plus gs hs equals to 0 1 plus gs here is given this this is our gs okay gs is given so <coughs> we have uh, simply write this 1 plus gs into hs hs 1 why you have chosen 1 because here is written for a unity feedback unity feedback closed loop system so our hs equals to 1 here so we just uh, simplified the equation we just put this into uh, multiply this plus k this sorry it will be plus k1 okay after that and this term will be zero and then we just multiplied this term and plus k and this is our characteristics equation okay now we'll put k one side and the other portion we will put another side okay so this is done here k and uh, the other things we just give a minus and put it another side now we'll make dkds so we just derivative make derivative of this now this dkds we have to set zero so if we say dkds equals to zero that means this is equals to zero this is equals to zero and from here we have <coughs> calculated the roots of s and there are three there will be three roots and from that roots we have to just choose that root which will lie between the root locus so here 3.09 lies between the root locus why because our root locus was 0 to f minus 4 okay you can see here from here there is no poles so we will go to the next pole so here our second pole from this pole you can see even number of pole is there so this total area will be our root locus 0 to minus 4 and we will not consider the imaginary poles imaginary poles are not considerable only real axis poles are considerable okay so you can see this is our root locus and 3.09 is in between the root locus so our breaking point will be approximately minus 3.09
after step 5 we are coming to step 6 here we have to find out the imaginary axis crossover ok how will we find out uh, we will just do row array for this so our characteristics equation here we find it um, found in that and this is our characteristics equation we have just written this our characteristics equation and make a row array for this ok you can check it so here you can see there is two zeros already so if we can make this zero this term will be our auxiliary equation so i have done just like this so we have made this zero and from that zero we can find out the k k value whenever we get the k value then we can make auxiliary equation auxiliary equation will be 26 by 3 s square plus k equals to zero so this is our auxiliary equation and here we will put the value of k you can see s square equals to 3k by 26 and that will be minus sorry huh? okay now minus 3 by 26 into k k value is 208 by 18 208 by 18 and that gives us value minus 4 by 3 so this is a square and here the two roots of s that is plus minus 2 by root 3 i that means 1.15 i plus minus okay so this point there is two points that will be crossing the imaginary axis to find out imaginary axis crossover so that will be crossing the imaginary axis and our step 7 the step 7 is only required when we have imaginary poles if you have poles on real axis you don't need to find the angle of departure if you have poles on the imaginary axis like this you have to find the angle of departure what we have done we just um, jointed the poles you can see here from these poles we have jointed the this pole then this pole and then this pole okay now we just uh, give names of these angles and just uh, this angle is phi 1 this angle is phi 2 and from here to this this angle is phi 3 we have considered this okay now phi 3 we can see clearly that that is 90 degree okay now we come to phi 1 so phi 1 value how we will find it find out mm. so here if you just see here this is 180 degree if we can subtract this angle from 180 degree we can find out this phi 1 so that is done here phi 1 equals to 180 degree minus this angle this angles mean what tan inverse of this by this tan inverse of this by this okay so this value i mean magnitude is one you know because the point is minus one plus j that means one j so this magnitude is one and this magnitude is one so 10 inverse one by one that is 135 degree if you solve this you will find out that now we have to find out phi to phi to what phi to is 10 inverse this by this I agree and now the magnitude of this length is what this length is 1 and the distance is minus 4 so this length will be only 3 magnitude ok so 10 inverse 1 by 3 just follow this this point was 1 minus 1 this point is minus 4 so the magnitude will be 3 ok 18.4 now the angle of departure our main motto was to find out the angle of departure in step 7 ok so the angle of departure will be simply the formula is 180 degree minus phi 1 plus phi 2 plus phi 3 we know the values of phi 1 phi 2 and phi 3 from here so we just put it into this and we will find out that uh, the angle of departure will be minus 63 degree so this is minus 63 degree you can consider as plus minus 63 degree now at step 8 you just have to roughly draw the root locus to understand what is root locus so as previously we have done uh, this is real axis and this is our imaginary axis and we just pointed out the poles here 0 at 4 minus 4 and at minus 1 plus j and at minus 1 minus j ok and what we have done before uh, we have had a centroid here and we had angle of asymptotes 4 angle of asymptotes now up to that our step 5 was completed step 5 or 4 um, step, five, step 4 completed now from step 5 you can see that from step 5 we have find out a breakaway point our breakaway point was 
at minus 3.09 so if we consider this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 and this is 4 so 3.09 will be approximately at this point so from this breakaway point two root locus will go this way one is this way and one this way and that will follow the path of the angle of asymptotes this okay up to infinite that will be follow the asymptote paths and after that breakaway point or step six tells uh, as the imaginary axis crossover okay i will tell it um, after okay 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 at step seven we have find it out the angle of departure okay so our angle of departure was minus 63 degree now what happens hmm. i said that this is plus minus 63 degree so you just make a horizontal line like this uh, then you will draw a 63 degree angle from here and from here you will make a minus 63 degree angle then you will just just draw it like this just draw it like this okay from the positive 63 degree and negative 63 degree. and where will it cut the imaginary axis that point gives that um, at step 6 we have find it out where the imaginary axis crossover is okay so the point gives uh, the point is on plus minus 1.15i so this point must be plus plus 1.15i and this point is minus 1.15i and that will be along the angle of asymptotes and that will be in, along the angle of asymptotes okay so this is how roughly the root locus look like now here friends if you see the graph i have shown everything here so the main point is only so the angle of departure will be 63 degree for that you have to make a horizontal line like this and by protector using protector you will measure minus 63 degree angle and just make it along just a little aside and you will measure from where it will crossing the imaginary axis you will point out there and roughly by your hand you make these lines and join it like this and from here you uh, raise it up to infinite along the angle of asymptotes for this also you make a horizontal line and then you measure by protector 63 degree positive 63 degree that is the angle of departure and then you measure the minus 1.15 axis point then you roughly meet it by hand and then raise it up to infinity along the asymptote angle and here another two root locus will be there and the on the breakaway point minus 3.09 this you will also make by your hand roughly and make it parallel of this and make it parallel of this and up to infinity this 